Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully. So today we're going to be talking about the new Etsy stats. And so first off, human beings don't like change, but I think this is more having gone through all of them. I'm writing a big long blog post about how to do this. So if you want to see it after I get the blog post done, I'll put it into the um, description so you can click through. If, if it's easier to see it laid out with pictures and words, then it's going to be there for you. But I wanted to give you, let's just go through it. And the thing about stats that's so funny to me is that people will look at stats, but they don't think about the marketing behind it and what's going on. So let's go through mine. And I will tell you that I haven't been working on my store over the summer and we're looking at the last 30 days, but I have been doing um, a lot more with Pinterest and you'll be able to see that as you go. Um, but so let's just get started. So as you start at the top, first off, you can change this, this stats amount. So you could go to all time and see your stats for all time. Um, my visits have gone up. My revenues have gone up. This year isn't done yet. So when we get to the end of this year and I sell planners, so at the end of the year is really big for me. But honestly, the last 30 days or this month or the last, um, so when you would use custom is say around Christmas time, you could really mess up your stats by thinking everything that's happening at Christmas time is what's actually going on with your stats when that's more of a seasonal thing. So you can change it to any custom date. And I think 30 days is good. A lot of times what I'll look at is 90 days. So if we took the last rolling 90 days, so if we're saying October 10th, and then we would say three back, seven, 11, oh, seven, 11, right? So that's my last three months, right? N must be one day at least, oh, I have them backwards. <laughs> Oops. Oops. So. 10 09 2019 okay so that's going to be the last rolling three months and then we can really see what's going on but the problem with that is now we're seeing part of you know july all of august whatever so i think the last 30 days and then looking at it if nothing else looking at it every 30 days is a really good way to go so first off, our visits. My visits are increasing, right? You can see that. So that's a combination of two factors that I can tell you that are happening. Number one, we're getting later in the year and people are going to start thinking about their planners for next year. And um, September is not historically a good month for me for sales. So my annual sales always go up at this time. Okay. That's something that you're going to be able to start knowing as you're in business longer. Okay. So my visits increased 3% compared to the same time last year, which is great. I love these kind of um, call outs that they're giving us that let us know where we're at. I don't love this one. So my orders have decreased 30% compared to last year, okay? And that makes a lot of sense. I have not been, um, I just started doing new products. I just started doing a lot more Pinterest um, marketing. And so I can get that to go up, but I will say that the nice thing about this number is it's year over year. So it's telling me last September and October were better for me than this September and October, rather than saying like last month was better or last month was worse, which happens to a lot of us seasonally. Okay, conversion rate, it decreased 31.8%. So What's your conversion rate is how many people have seen your listings and then how many people have purchased your product. So for you, that could mean that you need to write your descriptions better, that you need to have better pictures. Maybe your first picture is great, but it's your only picture and they want to see more of what the product is. That's definitely something that will help increase your conversion rate. So for me, I feel like if you got somebody to click through to your product, the best thing you can do is to focus on that conversion rate and see if you can get people who are already interested to buy your product. 
revenue. My revenue is down. My revenue decreased half compared to the same period last year. That could be a couple of different things that we can see later. My best selling product is actually um, a 350 product. Maybe more people bought the 1750 product I had last year. Or maybe I just haven't been working hard enough on my Etsy shop. And I know that to be a fact. But now the other thing is I can see right here that I have um, big patches of nobody buying anything, right? So that's really going to cause a problem. For me, if I'm making $30 a day, I'm making good money. That's just a couple planners. Um, increasing this would not be hard for me to do. And it's something that I'm working on right now. And we'll talk about that more, of course. Okay, how shoppers found you. Etsy app and other Etsy pages. So now the first thing we want to do is if you haven't done this in a while, get a quick rundown. And this is just going to show you Etsy app and Etsy other pages. Browsing from the Etsy app or on pages on Etsy.com excluding Etsy search, right? So any of the pages of apps, favorites, things like that. So that's kind of stuff that maybe Etsy's doing it on, um, that Etsy's kind of helping to promote. So mine has gone down a little bit, 10% down is not bad compared to some of the other um, metrics that we've looked at. Etsy search going down. So we can click through to each one of these and this is really nice. You can see the graph. It only accounts for 17% of my visits and it's going up, right? Now, why would it be going up? Because I have started driving more traffic to my Etsy store, people are going to start favoriting things more and then they're gonna get my other products in their favorite searches. So there's a huge, if you can start driving some traffic to your Etsy store, there's a huge value to that because some of these other stats are contingent upon that. Etsy search is not contingent upon that. Um, that's just how well I have been doing it. And the nice thing about this is they're going to show you your most visited listings on Etsy search for each different thing. So my Etsy SEO optimization sheet, which is so funny that my SEO is down, but I haven't been trying you guys. And then down here, you're going to be able to see like Paperly People is my web store, is my website name. You know, so I want to start looking at all these different keyword researches, real estate planner, getting things done, brainstorming keywords, pure romance planner. Like, what can I do in my Etsy SEO to get that number to increase? Because that, I haven't been working on that and that has not increased. It's a, stayed pretty steady over time. Okay, we're going to go back to stats because I want to do this in the order they're doing it. Next is Etsy marketing and SEO. Now this is really cute because they're saying visits from Google, Bing, Yahoo, and other search engines. Now it's easy to be snarky and to go, well, I'm so glad you're taking, uh, taking credit for that. But Etsy does a lot of paid marketing on Google. I've seen a lot of retargeting ads that they've done when somebody's visited my listings or when I've visited my own listings, they kind of follow me around. That's what that is, where Etsy's actually physically paying for marketing for on our behalf that is, um, is going to show up sometimes in here, right? So this is such a small portion of mine. This is, you know, I'm just not, that's not something I'm going to worry about. Direct and other traffic. This is, I brought 70% of my visits and Etsy brought 30% of my visits. So I am huge on being very careful to generate sales for my own store. If I was just sitting around waiting for Etsy to do this, I would have made 30% of what I made. And my rev, so I would have made $100 instead of $300. Now I know that's not apples to apples. My people might buy more because I've driven them there. And so that, that sales volume could be even less. So when you take it into your own hands to start driving some of this traffic, it's really going to make a difference to your to your income. Okay, direct and other traffic. This has gone down a wee bit, not very much, but this is from my other sites. This is where I've done my own, um, like I've done a blog post and included a link to these products. And this makes sense because I recommend Marmalade, which is an Etsy SEO search tool. I have an Etsy SEO worksheet. 
Um, there's not really another one on Etsy like this. If there is, God bless them. They stole it. I don't care. Um, daily planner for sure. I'm driving those because I have a whole daily planner printable on my other website. So if you have a blog, you can use that, you know, this to, um, to get people to your web, to get people to your listings. Excuse me. We're going to do uh, advertising and then we're going to do social media last because you've seen I've gone up 300% in social media. So advertising is exactly what they talk about when you pay for promoted listings. And now this is interesting. This is not a promoted listings class. But what I love about this is that they've kind of put it in my face and said, you need to look at this if you're looking at your stats. Because look at this, and they've hidden how much you pay. I love how everything is real big, and then how much you pay is tiny down here, but that's okay. So I spent $30 and made $70. Now, there is a point where if I spent $60, would I make $140? Maybe if I spent $90, would I make whatever that mathy thing is. There's a, di a, a diminishing return for spending more dollars in marketing but to me, this actually makes sense to spend more money. So I'm going to put this up to $1.50, then keep my eye on it and see what happens because I'll spend a dollar to make a dollar and 10 cents or whatever that is every day. Um, no, I'll spend a dollar to make $2 every day because I'm on the, the plus side of that. The other thing for me is this is a digital products listing. So this is very important to listen to. Spending a dollar to make a dollar when it's a digital product is awesome. Like I don't have fulfillment costs. I don't have sourcing costs. I don't have any other costs. My cost was my time in originally making that product. If you are selling vintage, if you are selling a regular product, if you're using your time to making your product, then $1 to make $2 is not okay. You're going to want to make at least four times, if not 10 times your return because you have to pay for shipping costs, not the shipping itself, but the packaging and the, you know, whatever you do in your shipping. So be very careful of that. One last thing about this, this kicked us out of stats. It moved us down to marketing over here. So we have to click stats to get back to stats. Now, social media. I'm up 297% and that's going to keep going up because I have started doing a lot more um, Pinterest marketing and this is up to, uh, it's up 328%. I have a whole course on Pinterest marketing. You can see I have some big spikes down here where it's starting to ramp up. Um, if I'm going to make sure to leave a link to that in the description. It's the, if you go to marketingartfully.com forward slash awesome Pinterest, you can find it. Um, but this is 21% of my visits, of all the visits to my store from Pinterest. And I'm driving those myself. And the nice thing is you can start to see that far and away, this is my Poshmark listing sheet, right? And then there's a whole bunch. The other thing of it is there's a whole bunch of other ones. So this is a big dog, yes. Real estate planners. Big dog, yes, but you can't discount all these other ones. What you want to do is you want to make more pins for the ones, if you're doing Pinterest, you want to make more pins for the ones that are actually working. Different pins, see, test things, do all that, see what's going on. Now, there are other, so we're going to go back to stats, right? Back to stats. And we're going to go down here to social media and talk about other social media. You want to look at your social media. You may have a ton of people coming from Instagram. Then you know that your time spent marketing on Instagram is very valuable, right? Because you're at least getting people to come to your store. If you're spending a ton of time on Instagram and you're, like I don't spend any time obviously on Instagram promoting my store, but if you're spending a ton of time on Instagram or Twitter or Pinterest or Facebook, and you're not seeing people coming to it, then you need to either change what you're doing on those platforms, figure out a way to get them to click through to your listings, or you need to allocate that time to some other kind of marketing because right now it isn't effective for you. All right, one last portion of this, and this is the same as it was before, so we're not going to talk about it a ton, but I really do want to go into what you should be looking at stats-wise here. 
So shoppers viewed my listing 5,700 times on an average of 1.33. So an average of 1.33 is really good. That means that they're going to different listings within my own store. Um, ways you can fix that is put links to your comparable listings in your description. You can make listings in little clusters so that Etsy recommends them. For example, I have four products for direct sales marketers. So if somebody's looking for a printable planner page for direct sales marketers, there's a good chance that they could stay right in my little ecosystem and find something that is what they're looking for. So that's a way to do that. This is going to go by views. So we're first sorting by views, top to bottom, right? So Poshmark is my best one um, overall. Now, the thing that stinks about Poshmark is I got one order. I got so many views. I got one order and the revenue was $350. That is not very good. So things I can do. Number one, getting people to my store anytime doesn't bother me, right? Like that's a nice thing to have happen. And somebody did steal for sure that um, sheet and is selling it as their own and I'm having trouble getting it taken down. Um, so they may be coming here. They may be going to my Poshmark sheet and seeing somebody else has one similar to it and buying that one. So not too much I can do, but having somebody come to my store is never bad. And if I can make it one more pin for Pinterest and get even more people to come, there's nothing wrong with that. This one is way more interesting to me. It got fewer views, it got more sales, and it has way higher revenue because it's a $17.50 product as opposed to a $3.50 product. So those are things you're really going to want to look at. The conversion rate on this one is terrible. So uh, to get conversion rate, you would divide 6 by 432, and you would find out what percentage of people are buying. This one is not good, right? I had 300 people buy, 300 people come, and only one person buy. So I need to look at that listing and see what's stopping them from purchasing it. This one is doing super well. Even fewer people, um, five sales, but this is where I was telling you, it's a lower cost product. So even five sales just matches the revenue I get for selling one planner. So those are all things you can think about when you look at your listings. Not to say you shouldn't sell lower price items because sometimes that can really help your sales volume. And one of the key um, indicators in Etsy search is recency of sales. So it never hurts to have sales coming in the door no matter what it's to. But at the end of the day, you want to look at your business and see how these stats actually affect what you should be doing in your business. Sorry about that. Joanne had to text me to tell me there's a sale. So hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully.